Good evening, wonderful humans, and welcome back to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here for day one of three days of live coverage here on theCUBE. It's a fantastic experience in the Venetian. If you can't tell behind me, it's buzzing, there's people hanging out, there's networking. We're going to be talking about one of the coolest partnerships that Dell has on the show. But real quick, I just want to say hello to Bob La Liberté, who we have never had the chance to co-host together before. This yeah. is huge. Hello. I, nice uh, to meet you. Ni nice <laughs> to meet you. How many Dell Tech Worlds have you been to? Uh, a bunch. I don't remember. Great, that honest. sounds super statistically significant. All right, with that data, we'll move forward to our fantastic guest, Ian Pilcher. You and I have been here before. Yeah. Great to have you back on the thank show. Thank you so much. And Travis Zhao, thank you for being on the show. Nice to be here, as thank you. Well, big week for you, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, we've talked Dell and Red Hat partnerships before. What's exciting about this week in particular? I'm going to start with you, Ian. So, um, you know, a few months ago, we were together in Chicago, and we were talking about the Apex Cloud Platform for Red Hat OpenShift, which is a collaboratively co-engineered apl OpenShift appliance solution um, that we've been working with Dell on. And a few months on, we're here, we could talk about some of the enhancements that we're making going forward. Um, I don't want to steal all of Travis's thunder, right. but I think you might find that this week's episode will be brought to you by the letters A and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I love that. Senior Principal Product Manager at Red Hat. I'll let you go ahead and take the stage now at this point, Travis. So, uh, you know, we've been doing uh, business with Red Hat for 25 years. Like two years ago, we decided to go deeper with the relationship. So actually, we jointly created a product, which the product is really about taking OpenShift container orchestration platforms on Dell infrastructure and package that with an easy to consume and easy to run kind of a package. Allow customer to you know, purchase it very easily, support it from one single point of support, and we provide all the automations for the full stack so that people can concentrate on operated, right, instead of being managed the day-to-day -day life. And the, the package really is about the OpenShift, as well as Dell's compute, Dell's software-defined storage, and we put our automation software together with that to give them the easy button. Perfect. Now, I know you mentioned Kubernetes, and everyone wants to talk about modern application architectures and so forth, but when I was at Red Hat two weeks ago, there was a, maybe a theme you might call it, a constant murmuring in the crowd, um, talking about organizations that were looking for potential alternatives for their virtualization solution. So, no, 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 to virtualization solutions. Okay. So, I, I know that came up a few times, I won't mention any names, but just a, just a few times it came up. So, maybe, you know, I know we're, we're here to talk in, in general about the Apex Cloud Platform right. for OpenShift, but maybe you can talk about how organizations can leverage that to, if they were looking for options, for just saying, for virtualization. For virtualization. For, for virtualization. whatever reason, for whatever they reason. might want to be doing that. Broadening their horizons, perhaps. Absolutely. How, how might you help them? So, OpenShift virtualization is a feature of the OpenShift product. Um, it's included in all of the various editions and such. As long as you are running OpenShift on bare metal, you can take advantage of OpenShift virtualization. Um, and what it does is it allows you to bring virtual machines into your OpenShift environment. Um, they, are, they are good citizens of the environment, if you will. They are peers of more modern containerized applications. They can participate in all of the cloud native features and technologies that OpenShift brings to the table. So, you know, declarative operations with GitOps, advanced networking with service mesh, um, really all of the features that people like about the Kubernetes and the cloud native space, you can bring your existing virtualized workloads over without having to modify those applications. And for some people that may be a step along the road to modernizing those applications, but in some cases, it may not be, you know, they can just fade away. Got it, yeah, no, definitely there was, there was a lot of talk about, and I was surprised as well, because I was thinking that 
this transformation would be part and parcel of a modernization, mm -hmm. but heard in a lot of cases, organizations, nope, I just need to migrate, and nope. I need to do it rather quickly. Yeah, so. and, and I should say, Dell Apex is a great platform for that. Right. It is a bare metal based OpenShift appliance, so OpenShift virtualization is there out of the box. Right. To add on what Ian had been saying, is basically we provide a lot of our, what I call the complementaries to the OpenShift virtualization. First of all, when you deploy the API call platform for OpenShift, it's virtualization ready. What I mean by that is that we leave a system that is actually doing virtualization. Right there, you can do that. Seamlessly for that. Seamlessly. Yes, that's a huge user experience for Exactly, and then yeah. the second thing actually we did is uh, provide the right storage for it because you have different use cases, the storage, you cannot, nothing, you know, it's not one size fits all, right? You always have to either right type of storage, right scale of the storage, right performance of the storage, so you got to have that storage portfolio come with the OpenShift virtualization. So that's what I did to basically come, you know, uh, complement uh, uh, virtualization. And also when I talk to customers recently, because of all the AI pushes, they feel like all the AIs are running containers, right? Yeah. And uh, they're running on OpenShift, and all of a sudden they also say, hey, you know what, OpenShift can also run virtualization. It's really kind of a double whammy that all things come together. This single platform can take them in the foreseeable future to run their virtualization workload, AI workload, and start their cloud native journey. That's got to give them a lot of comfort when they're on the journey of adopting. You know, is it, we, we talked about digital transformation in the past. I feel like we're in the middle of an AI transformation era. We haven't quite dubbed it that, but that's sort of what it is. Just, when you speak with customers, I'm just projecting, but given the longevity of the relationship between Red Hat and Dell, mm -hmm. does, does that trust and comfort carry forward when you're starting to recommend solutions for them moving forward as we? So we're starting building that trust, right? So what happens is that in the past, we're, uh, we're not a, uh, like a deep partner, but this basically makes the partnership re a really, really a big deal. Yeah. No, this is an embedded the, little, Exactly, yeah. and then the other thing I think customer get resident to is this is a co-engineer. It's not Dell engineer. It is uh, Red Hat. It's really that co-engineer. What happens is that we're taking Red Hat's pre-release code through a CD CD pipeline to our release cycle, and then we test all the Dell's hardware, making sure it runs before Red Hat even releases. So when Red Hat releases, we have that single package allow customer to have a peace of mind to run their infrastructure instead of worrying about is it going to work or not. So that really shows the customer the trust level you know, they, uh, between, between the partners. Yeah, and that, that's just so important, right, to have that ecosystem in the, the tightly integrated ecosystem, right? It's, it's not that just- partner play we've been talking about all day. Correct. It matters so much right now. It really does, and, and it's, but it's more than just partnering. It's, like I said, you're going beyond just partnering, right? This yeah, isn't, yeah. As Dave Valente likes to say, this isn't right the on. Barney partnership. I love you, you love me, that kind of thing. You guys are actually, <laughs> You're actually going not, in. Not that we don't. Yeah, yeah. You don't. But you're actually doing that, that tight integration with the engineering teams to ensure, like you said, when there's something released, you're there. So it's not like there's a delay, there's not a lag. So organizations, again, because they need to accelerate what they're doing, right? they need to make sure that when they're doing those upgrades that they're able to do them in a timely fashion. Absolutely, yes. Yep. Historically, you know, Red Hat and Dell have worked together for about a quarter century now. Yeah. And you know, you had that you had that assurance that if something that if something broke, we would work together and fix it. We're really taking that to the next level, which is we're giving an assurance that it's not going to break. Yeah. No, I think that's great. And the other the other cool part about your relationship is that both of you support that op open ecosystem, mm -hmm. which is so great, right? For the longest time, I've been covering Dell and covering covering Red Hat as well. It's always been about how do we keep things open? Yeah. How do we drive and focus Absolutely. on that yeah. ecosystem of solutions? Because we all know not, there's no one vendor that can do it all. So being able to, to drive those, those partnerships, I think it's going to be incredibly important for the future of deploying technology, leveraging it to help organizations drive their business. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, without question. So I'm curious, you, you're providing this cohesive experience for users. What is the feedback loop between both of you, your customers, and then each other when you're talking about how to build tools that cross-pollinate like this? So we, uh, for me, right? Uh, yeah, go, speak start, or, yeah, yeah, you so go first. So basically service. what we do is that we talk to the customers all the time. For example, I meet like five or six different customers right here in the show. 
they tell me what they love about OpenShift and then what they're expecting us from doing, how do we simplify them, so we take customers directly back, and we'll take it back, and we also talk to our salespeople, right, so salespeople, you know, what kind of features and things that we should put into the product, and for example, the, the right side of the storage is really direct feedback from our customers as well as sales, and then, to be honest, what the customer love the most is our simplicity. At the end of the day, they are looking for an outcome, right? They don't want to worry about it, they just want the outcome. So with our automated uh, automation, we were able to reduce 90% of the deployment time. It's all about time to value, and then when we do the automated lifecycle management for the entire infrastructure, we save 90%. That right now, they're doing manual, so all of those are very resonant with the customer. So when you two collaborate you know, mm -hmm. behind closed doors before we have a meeting like this, uh, do you find, and I'm just curious, you don't have to reveal any secrets, but do you find that your customers are craving the same things, so it's easy to create joint solutions? Yes, ab absolutely. Um, I, like Travis, I talk to a lot of customers yeah, at tell, shows like you. this, and um, directly and such, and their, their desires for the, for the platform, they, they love what Dell has done with this platform with the integration between the, the Dell hardware management and the OpenShift console, the ease of installation. Um, for Red Hat, OpenShift is the, the cloud OS, if you will. Um, that's where we, where we think yeah. workloads be run best. And that, apply, you know, in the public cloud, I click a button, I've got an OpenShift cluster. With Dell Apex, I get the same thing in my data center. Yeah. Nope. Which, okay, so I have to ask, because you're a master of multi-cloud. We were having a little bit of a debate in our, our keynote analysis analyst segment earlier today in terms of the distribution of AI across on-prem or cloud hybrid. Where are we going to be at? Travis, I'm going to ask you first. Obviously, there's a lot of moving pieces right now, but what do you think the inevitable solutions for some of the big enterprise companies are going to be? Is it going to be hybrid? Is it going to be mostly on-prem? Are we going to lean into the cloud like we have? What's going to happen next? I think it's all about the hybrid at the end, because you, you know it's, so you, you can't run everything in the public cloud, because sometimes the data is restricted outside. So if you can't move your data to the public cloud, you need to move the application down-prem to your data, right? So this is all about our joint product, yep. and you make it hybrid. So, so basically the same thing you deploy on-prem, we have the same thing you can deploy in the public cloud from an open ship perspective. But remember, right. we also have a Dell storage. The Dell storage that we provided to open ship can run on-prem, they can also run in the public cloud. So you kind of have hybrid compute and then also hybrid storage so that your data and your application can basically move between yep. cloud up and down. So that gives you that flexibility and assurance, right? Yeah. Nothing in. What do you think? I mean, I would. I agree. agree. I would agree. Yeah. If, if you've followed Red Hat for the last decade or so, you may have heard us yammering on about this thing called Open Hybrid Cloud, and the cool Just bit. Just once. The cool. <laughs> yeah, once or twice. <laughs> the cool bit twice. is it. It like the industry. It, it like it's really happening, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is this is cool stuff. Which is awesome. No, and it is. It's cool. Just like you know, kind of just like other applications, but more so. The future of AI is going to be hybrid because data lives in different places, and the mostly the data and the capacity lives in different places, or you know the the workload needs to live say at the edge for latency 100%. purposes. That's that's going to be massive, you know. In totality, if you actually look at the you know the flops that will be devoted to AI workloads, the edge is going to outnumber everything. Just, just like the ants, you know, oh. out, out, you know, outmass us all. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. We've got edge devices in everyone's hands. Right. Right. And this is going to become an AI device and augmented reality. By the next time for we're first chatting, responders. you know, it's kind of yeah. No, nah. it's it's a whole different ballgame. <laughs> Totally, totally. Well, and, it, and as long as we're talking about AI, some for some reason that comes up a lot lately. <laughs> I guess we're here. We might as well. I mean, some of the announcements from a couple of weeks ago, OpenShift. Yep. AI, I know from the, the cloud platform, Apex, you've done a few things to help deliver better AI experiences as well in the platform. Do you guys want to take a few minutes and talk sure. about what so, you've launched? You know, OpenShift AI, from, from my perspective, is really what takes AI, it takes AI from being a science project and makes it into a real production-ready, deployable, manageable workload 
just like OpenShift does for, you know, for more general apps, OpenShift AI does that for the AI apps, so we, you know, we have tooling for the, for the life cycle, essentially, for model development, training, deployment, life cycling, and, and ultimately retirement. Yeah, so we actually uh, was at the uh, Red Hat Summit, so we made a couple of uh, uh, announcements. So, to basically accelerate and optimize OpenShift AI running on Apex Cloud Platform. Uh, we actually extended our GPU support with NVIDIA to add an L40S, which can satisfy most demanding customers' uh, AI workload. Right. And also we refreshed a DVD, which is what we call validated design, yep. to allow customers to build a digital assistant using OpenShift AI on their Apex Cloud Platform. And also, we're going to bring another kind of a, a, a reference architecture to basically using NVIDIA's uh, RIA technology to do speech recognition and translation. Right? This is the power of three. Dell, uh, Red Hat, as well as uh, NVIDIA to make that jointly happen. Last, I have to mention, we have also introduced the support of object scale storage. Object storage is, is a very important part of the AI workload because it really gives you that scalable and efficiency data management, right. and it's the best solution for hosting those uh, large language models as well as large data sets. So it's really a combination of all these. We make AI really uh, uh, a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a reality, right? And that's what we're all here talking about, right? It's not just about the high curve, right. it's not just about the ecosystem, it's about making AI real and how it's going to affect real people's lives. That's going to be my closing question to both of you gentlemen. And I might have asked you this before, but we'll take a slightly different spin on it. So since we're in the Dell ecosystem right now, sure. lots changed in the last year. Even when I was reviewing some of the videos from last year, we were still saying generative AI instead of gen AI. I mean, even just the nuance of how slang, and, and like to your, <laughs> to your point, a year and a week ago, certain things have changed. All, all this stuff has changed so quickly. So what do you hope, Ima, I'm going to start with you, so get ready. What do you hope we can say at Next Dell Tech World oh, wow. that's happened that, that we can't say yet today? I, you know, what I want to see is more is real stories of AI out in the world helping people, having a real positive impact on lives. It, it's easy to think of the negative uses. We've all seen the movies. Um, I think when we first did our interview, they yeah. were playing the Terminator. We, we talked a little bit about background. Skynet. No, we, we talked a little bit about um, Skynet last time. That, know, that, that was the thing. That's, yeah. that's easy to see, and that, you know, there will be bad actors, I'm sure, but. It can do so much good. You, if you were, I don't know if you were at Red Hat Summit, but you, you saw the video of the folks from the, the Boston Children's Hospital, um, you know, doing fe fetal image scanning, and the only way it could be done was with AI. That's just, that's just incredible stuff that has the potential to have massive improvements in quality of life for people all over the world. Absolutely. Yeah, it does. Travis, what about so you? For me, really, next year we come here, I think Dell will have a, I'm thinking, I'm dreaming, right? It's a, a, a what I call a composable AI factory. What it yes. does allow you to do is really compose the read, write AI configurations to take AI to various different use cases. Not every AI is in the data center, they could be in the edge, they could be in the remote side. So it's all about at the end using a composable way to build all of these outcomes for customer in a very fast and effective way. So that's all right, we're holding we're you to it. There. Fast and effective next year. Next year. That's going to be our theme. <laughs> nice. That's great. Ian, Travis, thank you both so much for being here. Bob, pleasure hosting with you for Same. the first time. And thank all of you for tuning in wherever you might be on this beautiful rock we're blessed to live on. My name's Savannah Peterson. We're here in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. It's night one of three days of theCUBE's live coverage here at Dell Tech World. You're watching the leader in enterprise tech coverage.